Chapter one deals with the essential ideas that we're going to be using throughout this course. Section one is titled Chemistry and Context. And by the end of this video, you should be able to differentiate between theories and laws and differentiate between the different domains of chemistry. A scientific law is something that summarizes our observations. It helps us to, to describe and predict what outcomes will be for an experiment and answers questions that ask what. Scientific theories, on the other hand, are testable explanations of observations and they answer why and how things happen. If we look at this statement, the pressure of a sample of gas is directly proportional to the temperature of a gas. We need to determine whether it is a scientific law or a scientific theory. This statement simply tells us that the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. It tells us what happens and allows us to predict the outcome, but it does not answer why or how this happens. So this statement is a scientific law. There are three domains of chemistry, the macroscopic, the microscopic, and the symbolic. The macroscopic domain consists of everyday things that are large enough for humans to sense them directly by either sight or touch. The microscopic domain consists of things that are too small to be seen unaided. Sometimes with a microscope, we can see things that are part of that microscopic domain, but often, especially in chemistry, we're looking at things like atoms and molecules that are too small to be seen even with a microscope. The last domain is the symbolic domain, which is a specialized language that we use to represent things that are part of either the macroscopic or the microscopic domain, things like chemical symbols, graphs, and drawings. Now, when we're looking at something that's part of the symbolic domain, we need to be able to tell whether it's looking at something that is symbolizing a macroscopic domain object or a microscopic domain object. So if we look at these four statements, there are underlined terms, and we're going to look at whether those are dealing with something that is part of the macroscopic, the microscopic, or the symbolic domain. The first statement says a certain molecule contains one H atom and one Cl atom. H is the chemical symbol for hydrogen, so this is part of the symbolic domain. However, this H is referring to a single atom of hydrogen. Well, an atom is part of the microscopic domain, so this H is symbolic of the microscopic domain. The second statement Copper wire has a density of about 8 grams per centimeter cubed. Copper wire is part of the macroscopic domain. It's something that is big enough for us to be able to see and feel directly. The third statement, the bottle contains 15 grams of Ni powder. Ni is the chemical symbol for nickel. So this is symbolic. However, it's symbolizing the powder, which is part of the macroscopic domain. So in this case, Ni, the chemical symbol, is symbolic of the macroscopic domain. And the last statement, a sulfur molecule is composed of eight sulfur atoms. Sulfur molecules are too small to be seen, so they are part of the microscopic domain. So we have macroscopic, which is big enough for us to see or sense directly, microscopic, which are objects that are too small to see or sense directly, and symbolic, which can either symbolize macroscopic or microscopic domain objects.